Hey guys, it's Kasim. Welcome back again to my channel. I hope you're doing all right. I hope family's all right and you're all right. Um, I wanted to talk about three lessons that I've learned following this whole investigation into the Met Police, which is uncovered misogyny, it's uncovered racism, it's, <coughs> it's uncovered harassment, um, it's uncovered all kinds of things. Um, and I've been watching all of this news and I've been reading up on it. <coughs> and I wrote down three things, three lessons that I have taken away from this. Um, I wanted to share them with you. I hope in some way they can add some value to the quality of your life um, and can help you to become a higher, fuller expression in some way of who you're capable of becoming. Uh, but before I get into those guys, um, if you want to help me get to a thousand subscribers by June, please can you like and subscribe to my channel. You'll be an absolute legend. Okay, cool. So let's get into these three lessons that I wrote down. So the first thing that I wrote down here is, is that sexism, racism, bullying and homophobia, whilst we may have moved forward on them, we have not moved forward as much as we think we have, right? And I guess for me, the thing that I have to really think about regarding me is that I have to take it upon myself as Kasim to any time that I see these things to say something. Because I think the assumption that we make, you know, I was talking to a guy yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yesterday or the day before. And he said something to me that I found interesting. He said to me, Kasim, he was talking to me about voting. And I said to him, I only vote. He was asking me, like, what do I vote and who do I vote for? And I said to him, I don't really vote. The only time that I vote is when there is an extreme party. Okay. So, for example, if I think that there is basically somebody who is going to do more damage like considerably more damage to society i will vote and i said to him the reason i have this belief system is because essentially politics doesn't really matter for anybody unless you're one of three people firstly you're somebody who's really rich because if you're really rich politics affects you income tax legislation affects you the second is if you have a business if you have a business, everything that happens with politics is going to affect your business in one way or another. And third is if you're uh, on benefits or you rely on the government. Okay? Because if you rely on the government, it's going to affect you. Apart from that, I don't vote. Right? That's part of the reason why I don't vote. And one of the things that he was asking me about, and we were having a conversation around, was um, he was asking me about voting. And he said um, that one of the things that he does is that he tends to vote... Um, in the finals of like uh, talent shows um, and he was explaining to me that the reason why he votes in the finals of talent shows is because many times in the finals is usually somebody who's really exceptional and there's somebody who's really crap or, or average and he said that part of the reason why he votes is because so many times he's watched uh, these shows and uh, the person who is supposed to be the winner ends up losing. And he said that part of the reason why that happens is because everybody assumes that that person is going to be voted for. So they don't further vote him because it's like everybody assumes they're so good that everybody's going to vote for them. They're going to be the obvious winner, but nobody ends up voting for them. And he said that there are always some stupid people who vote for the person who's not that exception anyway. Um, and many times that person ends up winning when they shouldn't be the one who ends up winning. And so as I was thinking about this, this is one of the things that I think is very important with life because so many of us in life don't recognize and don't understand that there are things that if we don't do any that are wrong in the world. And many of us presume, oh, somebody will take care of that. Oh, that's somebody else's fight. Oh, somebody else will, will deal with that. But the reason, but the the reason why it continues is because we see it and we think it's okay and we don't do anything about it, or we don't think that it's okay and we remain silent. Um, and I guess for me, as Kasim, one of the things that I then have have been thinking about is Kasim. When you see this kind of things, number one, do you even recognize what it does for people? So when you hear somebody making a misogynistic comment. Is it a joke to you? And do you, do you number one, recognize that it may be a joke to you or to other people, but to somebody else, it is really offensive. It's like really hurtful, right? And do you recognize that? And, and number two, does that person actually want you to fight their battle? 
right? Because many times as people, we fight other people's battles, but they don't want us to fight our, their battles. So I've, I've really had to think about this, and I, and I have had to re really recognize, well, what do people who, are race, who think, uh, people who face racism, what is their experience of that? What would they classify as racism? Because I personally really haven't ever received racist comments in my life. Well, I have, but I've never really taken them that seriously because I just don't really lower myself to that kind of standard. So I have to think about this in, in, from my own perspective and think, okay, Kasim, but there are some people who do take racism really seriously and they have had a really bad experience. So what, what is their experience? What would they consider as racism? Because if I don't know what they would consider racism, then I can't really identify that those racist remarks. I may think that it's just a joke, but to them, they consider that as really serious, right? And so that's really the first thing that I've been thinking about. And I don't know whether you can relate to that. Maybe you in your own life, you've never really thought about what the experience of somebody who has received homophobic comments, what that actually is like what it feels like to be judged upon something which you can't necessarily control. Because I've met a lot of gay people, and a lot of gay people don't really, if they could choose it, they wouldn't have been gay, right? It isn't something um, that they've, w w it was a choice for them, and they just decided, you know what, I'm just going to choose it. Now, in me saying that, there's always an exception. There will be some outlier, some, cra some crazy person who decides that they want to be gay because they want to stand out, or because they want to uh, 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 sort of rebel against the system. But most people who I've come across who say that they're gay, it isn't something which they've chosen. It's just something that they are. Um, so I was thinking about that, and, and I don't know if you can relate to that or what that brings up for you in your own life. The second thing that I wrote down here is that the thing about the force is it's systematic. Um, let me tell you what I was thinking about as I was thinking about the force. The issue with things like the police force is that uh, it's really, really difficult to break that kind of culture because everything in that culture is systemized, meaning that if uh, usually and I'm generalizing here, if you go into the police force, it's usually because your brother, your cousin, your uncle was in the Navy, was in the Army, was in the force, was a detective. Usually, a member of your family is in that career, and they inspired you in some way to go into it. And so, what you end up happen, ends up happening is, and it's something that I've had to think about, is that a lot of one of the things that's really difficult about breaking things that are systematic is that it is usually generational. My uncle is in the police force. My grandfather was a, a, a commissioner in the police force. Many of the people who are in the police force have the same ideal kind of mindset. They're the same kind of uh, a, a kind of upbringing and culture. They have the same kind of belief system because, you know, a bit like the army, the army, when you go into the army, you may be unique on the outs outside of the army, but the army will train you to think like everybody else in the army, to behave like everybody else in the army, which is part of the reason why, for example, if I'm going off topic here, in the army, why when uh, crimes of war happen, Nobody does anything about it because everybody in there is all about camaraderie, all about um, looking after the man to your left and your right, not being a, a snitch, right? It's all about teamwork. So you can't, even if you know something is wrong, you can't really say anything about it because it goes against everything that you've been trained to do. And in the police force, the police force, the culture and the ethics and the belief system and the paradigm is that you stick to your own, Okay. You don't say anything. You shut your mouth unless something extreme, so extreme has happened. You, that's typically the culture of the army, of the police force. Am I wrong? It's systematic. Pretty much most people have the same ethos. Now, there will be outliers, as I say, because, for example, as I was studying this story, there were people who left the, there were people who were on the news who left the police force because they didn't like the culture, because they'd received racism or they'd raised something and nobody did anything about it. Um, and they just didn't fit in that system. And things, systems are designed to be, be able to produce 
certain result, right? That's how systems work. A system is designed so that something is repl re re replicable, right? You can do certain things and get certain outcomes. Um, and, 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 and unfortunately with systems, if you have somebody step out of the system, it breaks, it makes everybody else weak. So that's part of the reason, like, to go again off topic, this, I was spent a lot of time studying Africa, and, what, and I, my question was, why is Africa still so far behind the rest of society? We know how to make, purify water, we know how to get people educated, all of this kind of stuff. And I was like, what is going on with Africa? Why is Africa so far behind places like India and Egypt, um, and um, and uh, places like uh, America and the UK, even though we have all we have minerals, we have everything that the world has. And part of the reason that I found is that because of corruption. And the issue with corruption is that corruption is built on a pyramid where everybody within that pyramid, even if they were a good person, can't step out of the pyramid. Even if you're good, you usually if you're in the pyramid, in that system of corruption, you built your entire life on corruption. Right, the position that you in is you you built it on buying people and and uh, people helping you get to your position. So if you decide to step out and um and make and and speak out and say this isn't right, whatever you make every you expose everybody, you make everybody else vulnerable. Right, this is where you get people being killed, people's families being threatened, because the the moment somebody comes out of a system, they make it vulnerable. So for me, I've just been thinking a lot about this and systems and how to break out of them and like how does somebody, and I've been thinking about like, am I part of a system? How do I break out of that system if I'm in a system? It's something that I've been thinking about. And, and I, again, it's slightly off topic, but it, for me as Kasim, I've really had to think about this because there are systems all around me. And many times when you're in a system, you don't even realize it because it's, it works. The only time you realize that a system's you're even in a system is when it doesn't work when something goes wrong um yeah i don't know whether you can relate to that or what your thoughts are on that i'd obviously love to hear your thoughts um the last thing that i wrote down here is is not to idolize people in positions of power i think particularly for me as kasim you know i i, I wrote a book my first book was all about conditioning and in that book, I talked about something called the default to truth. The default to truth basically just means that as people, we will believe whatever people tell us unless the evidence is overwhelming as to why we shouldn't trust them or we shouldn't believe them. So that basically means that unless somebody comes along and gives you information that is so crazy is so mad that you like it's so overwhelming that you have to go and actually look at it and consider it you're just going to believe people and i think one of the things that i try to tell people all the time is look you have to be the doctor of your own life because so many of us we for example take the you know i, I don't know if you've ever heard this phrase is this phrase which goes something on the lines of get a second opinion if you go to your doctor and your doctor gives you certain a certain outcome People say get a second opinion. Why? Because your doctor could be wrong. And I think there's a lot of us in life that go through life and we are living from a space where we just believe whatever we're told by people in figureheads, right? People in positions of power. If the, if the news tells us something, it, it must be right. It has to be. Because otherwise, why would the police, why would the news tell it? If a police officer says for us to do something, we must do it. Why? Because we must be something in the wrong if the police officer is telling us something. And what I would persuade to you is to get to know the law. To 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 under like for me, like I've been thinking like cats. You really need to understand how the world functions. You need to understand what is your the law. What are your rights and what are not your rights? Like you need to understand. Like for example, I was watching this video of this woman who it took her years uh, to basically um, ask for CCTV cameras and CCTV footage of when she was arrested because all these officers were talking about her and saying that and they stripped her down and they were talking about her, you know, women parts smelling and all this kind of stuff. 
and of course it was completely inappropriate things that they were saying and you've got to think if she didn't have th that kind of drive to know that what they did was wrong and pursue this for years so that they would release that kind of evidence she would have just given up and the culture that culture and that systematic kind of wrongdoing would have continued and i think so much of life is about understanding how does the world function and i've just found that a lot of us in life we don't really know how the world works like even for me i've been like Cass. Do you understand how lawyers make decisions? Do you understand how the judicial system works? Do you understand how sentencing works? Do you understand how um, nurses work? Like, it's just uh, basically having a holistic understanding of life. And I think the more that you begin to learn about this, like, how do politics work? How do, so like, for example, I was talking to somebody the other day and I was saying, you really shouldn't worry about people the policies that people say that they're gonna revolutionize things like or oh, we're gonna revolutionize housing because if you understood how to get how actually getting a bill through parliament actually works it is so difficult to do anything radical in parliament it just is so difficult and so you have to go through so many processes that anyone who ever promises you anything like we're gonna change all this and we're gonna change it is a liar because People don't like dramatic change, and there is no way they're gonna anyone's gonna come along unless there is really a pressing need for it that they're gonna come along and revolutionize a certain area of life, particularly when we're talking about politicians. And so, having an understanding of how politics works and stuff like that really helps um, in life. It's been my experience anyway. Um, so that. I think one of the lessons that I've taken away is, Cass, don't, so, don't be so quick to idolize people, teachers. Teachers can be wrong. Teachers are exactly people as us, like us, police officers, doctors, right? Don't be so quick to b b assume that just because they're qualified, just because they're in a position of power, that they're right, right? That doesn't mean that they're right. Just because I'm saying certain things to you and you're watching me, it doesn't mean that I'm right. I don't know. Right? Each one of us is different. Our circumstances are different. We can only go based on our life. Obviously, we can take principles and lessons for the, from other people, but we then have to apply it to our own lives and see if it works and to see if it makes sense. I don't know. That's what I've been thinking about. I don't know if, if it's any use to you or not. Um, if it has been, and you want to support me get to 1,000 subscribers by June, please can you like and subscribe to my channel. You'd be an absolute legend. Okay, cool, cool. I'll leave it there. But I want to thank you very much for watching. And I'll speak to you very soon. Bye for now.